Music is my first language more so than words, I think. I definitely listen more than I talk. It's the way I feel most comfortable kind of expressing myself. And, you know, if I've had a sort of difficult experience, I'll write a piece of music and I find it very cathartic to do that. And in the same way, if I've had a beautiful experience, I'll tell it to the piano and then I'll share it with other people rather than sitting down and talking about it. My name is Isabel Wallerbridge and I am a composer. The thing about music that I find really interesting is that it, for me it always is about feeling and then it's like what is that feeling? Why are you having that feeling and what's the narrative behind that feeling? Your own kind of imagination is, is freed into the world of the composer's music and that to me is a really beautiful thing. The journey to becoming a composer, it started with maybe just exploring sound when I was very, very small. There are photos of me at sort of like four years old, just sort of on someone's knee, kind of at the piano, pressing the keys. And it really was from then on, you know, I started playing quite seriously from quite a young age. I was taught by this wonderful uh, teacher, this piano teacher called Mrs. Lee at school. I'll never forget Mrs. Lee. She, I carry Mrs. Lee with me. <laughs> at the beginning of every lesson, we would spend maybe five minutes just connecting with the instrument. And she would make me place my hands on the keys but not make any sound and just run my hands up and down the piano and put my head on the piano and just really breathe and become kind of really connected. And I've taken that through, you know, to this very day I do it, depending on what I'm about to work on. Um, but if I'm starting something new, certainly, it's like really important that I feel so present with the piano. And um, she taught me that. And I never forget the, the sort of such a simple, simple instruction, but to breathe. And I forget to breathe sometimes. <laughs> And so I can hear her just saying, Isabel, breathe, and it's everything. When I was growing up and I was playing the piano all the time, I, I was kind of finding that I was really drawn to the romantic composers. And so I went through definite phases. I went through a big Rachmaninoff phase. <laughs> and, you know, again, it was just all feeling, all emotion, kind of big sound, nothing kind of too delicate. I think I'm quite a sort of quiet person and so all my expression came through playing these kind of huge pieces. With Rachmaninoff it's very very melodic which is very satisfying to play because they it falls under the fingers and you understand it kind of instantly and I really enjoyed that journey and then as I got to university I found Janicek and Janacek just changed so many things for me. It was melodic, the harmony was kind of unusual, it was interesting to play, the shapes under the fingers were um, kind of challenging in a new way. The, the way that the harmony evolved, it's quite kind of minimal sometimes, certainly in In the Mist, which is the piano piece that really captured me. It's not, it doesn't sort of sound very, very complicated, but there's a real delicacy that is needed, I think, for playing it. And it's so poetic, but in a kind of understated way, it shimmers in ways that I hadn't kind of experienced in playing the kind of other, other pieces that I've been growing up with. From there, I went to Kurtag, and, um, and then I also found Poulenc. And those kind of three composers really, like, broke open music for me in a totally new way. So with Rachmaninoff, for instance, I'd been used to kind of playing these. Like really melodic, really, really melodic. And then when I, some years later, I found Poulenc and I found this piece, his Trois Pièces, and um, the harmony just blew my mind. It starts.
The way I sort of start composing, it's quite interesting to me anyway, because I find that actually a lot of the composing I do kind of conceptually in my head before I write anything down. So that involves quite a lot of walking around. Yeah, certainly at the beginning, walking, reading, doing sort of nothing, looking out the window, you know, that sort of thing. I don't sort of get a commission and then instantly sit down at the piano and think, oh my God, what is it going to be? It doesn't, it doesn't really work like that. I have to really spend a lot of time thinking about it. And that really, I would say, is about 80% of the work for me. And then the final stage is the craft. A lot of that is done sort of with a computer and and I know that if I'm ever stuck, if I can't think of, you know, the way a melody should, you know, evolve or something, instantly I go to the piano and the whole thing is unlocked. And I have to kind of trick myself. I'm working, but I have to sort of pretend that I'm not working in order to relax my mind so that I can come up with the idea. I think for young composers, the only advice that I could give is based on my own experience, which is just make music just as much as possible and it really doesn't matter kind of who for and also then it's important I think to explore the different kinds of music making. There's music making with you know collaborating with other people in other disciplines, there's the more introspective kind um, and just to find your way to experiment as much as possible.